There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with a review of a wonderful Japanese novel from the 1970s that I just finished reading this morning. Usually I like to take a few days to kind of mull over my responses to the novel, but this was a completely different reading experience. Very immersive. I'm a Canadian, I've lived in Japan for a dozen years, and I was just dialoguing with myself with every chapter, with every page, and I am just ready to express all that. I don't need words worthy in contemplation or any of that jazz. I just want to tell you about it. Here it is, The Twilight Years by Sawako Areyoshi, translated from the Japanese by Mildred Tahera. And I'm not going to hold the book up anymore because it's the but ugliest book cover. It's one of those print-on-demand jobbies with the glossy cover. The paperback edition that has gone out of print has a much more attractive cover, so I'm going to put that gif up for the rest. This novel was really wonderful. It's a very accessible novel that, if you don't know much about Japanese culture, it takes you inside all of the ways in which death and aging in particular, but many other everyday family issues, work themselves out or not within Japanese culture. And I love that so much. And one of the reasons why it's so accessible is the protagonist, Akiko, she is a middle-aged working mother of a teenage son just about to finish high school and lives in the same urban yard, small plot of urban land, with her parents-in-law that inhabit a small cottage in the backyard. I think that possibly Arayoshi amped up her cluelessness, maybe a bit too much, but I don't know. I'm still on resolved about that and I don't need to be because my reaction to her kind of being clueless at so many points where I just thought really you don't know this it's not like I knew it as the reader but why didn't she know it it's kind of endearing and it just pulls you deeper into the culture because she's kind of figuring stuff out as she goes along I don't mean to say that she's an idiot she is not but she is caught off guard at several key moments in this very almost claustrophobic family drama about having an aging parent. In this case, it's her father-in-law. I'm not even going to tell you anything more about how the novel opens because I'll let you discover it for yourself. I don't need to reveal that to talk about the book. Her father-in-law, Shigezo, is 85 and suddenly gone senile. And one of the things that I thought this novel dramatized beautifully in a way that I don't remember any other Japanese fiction doing is the kind of silo, the siloization of Japanese life. Like the elderly parents were living in the backyard, but Akiko or her husband, Nobutoshi, their own son, didn't realize that his elderly father, Shigezo, had started to go senile because they were just so busy and they didn't really... Have much to do with them. There are family conflict reasons why their relationship was a little bit separate too that you can read about, but suddenly they have this huge problem on their hands because 85-year-old Shigazo doesn't even know his son anymore, only recognizes Akiko and the grandson Satoshi, and is just very, very needy. We never really get to know him other than Akiko remembering what he was like, and he used to be a bastard. The Japanese men in this novel don't come out well, and aside from my husband, I'm here to say that's probably a fairly accurate depiction of Japanese culture. Did I say that out loud? Akiko's husband, Nobutoshi, I wanted to slap him upside the head every time he made an appearance. What a jerk. And Shigezo had been, and then he, you know, lost his mind, and he became a real handful, but he didn't have that miserable personality that he had before. Akiko, I really grew to love her. She was flying by the seat of her pants, working woman in a time when it was really uncommon for married women to work outside the home. It still is quite uncommon back when this story was set. This novel was published in Japanese in 
1972. So the story would be set, you know, late 60s, early 70s. There's reference made to the student revolts. That was late 60s, I think. So somewhere around there. So she is an unconventional Japanese woman and she has her hands full because she's taking care of her husband who is completely just lazy and, you know, work obsessed. That still continues to this day. I just wanted to slap him. And now this doddering old man, there was no love lost between them. And now she has to take care of him and she's got a demanding job. Son is finishing high school, studying for college entrance exams. And the way Japanese families are preoccupied with that rite of passage, high school students studying for entrance exams, the family just shuts down and coddles that high school student to allow them the time and space to study for, you know, 18 hours a day. (laughs) And they don't go on vacation. They don't do anything. That's something very distinct about Japanese culture that is depicted here really well. But she is at her wit's end. She doesn't know what to do. She is exhausted. Nobody's helping her. And there doesn't seem to be social support for what to do with an elderly parent living in the home. It is really gripping. This is very much a social novel. So it shows the way things were for elderly people in Japan at at that time and I think things are a little better in terms of social support, governmental support, but it's still a big challenge. Much is made in the novel about how the Japanese population is aging and now in the year 2021 it is, I mean the population of working people is shrinking year by year and Japan is heading for a demographic train wreck and this novel chronicles that situation from 30 years ago or 40 years ago my goodness this is really a character-based look at how a family doesn't pull together and how the poor housewife a working woman she's a lovely woman i loved her she was a bit you know clueless and i still can't decide whether that was a very minor flaw in her characterization or not but it didn't decrease my enjoyment of the novel one iota because she was so real i could relate to her very deeply it's not possible to experience that in every novel but when that happens that pulls me deeper into it and i just loved it it's as a piece of writing i think it's really good but it's not it's not a masterpiece literarily it's a very solid well-written novel that tackles an issue that you don't really see not only not in Japanese fiction but just in modern fiction it's not tackled enough I recommend this extremely highly and like I say if you're not all that attuned to Japanese culture this is a good starting place and if you're looking for a novel that addresses aging and women's liberation or lack thereof in the conventional family this novel just is an unrelenting look at that such a good story i'm prattling on enough i'm just going to read you the opening page or something to give you a little taste of the writing and really great translation by mildred tahara i want to read much more by sawako Ariyoshi. this is my first by her This was a recommendation from the Irish novelist Ronan Hessian, and I sure want to find more by her. Oh, and by the way, this is set in Tokyo. Uh, Probably all the locations mentioned in the story where the family lived is like probably I could walk to that neighborhood in about 20 minutes. So that was pretty cool, too. Interesting that the translation translates Avenue to Kaido. So there's a reference in the second sentence to Ome Avenue, which I think of as Ome Kaido, and it's a very famous street in central Tokyo, where I live. Akiko emerged from the subway station, carrying a large shopping bag in each hand. A light snow was falling along Ome Avenue. Akiko regularly bought her frozen foods on Saturday, and now, looking at the snow, she congratulated herself for having got her shopping done. It was an early snow, but judging from the cold, she felt that it would continue to fall. Akiko stopped at the corner store on her way home. She bought a loaf of bread and, after a moment's pause, added a few sweet rolls, for recently her only son, soon to take his college entrance examination, had developed a voracious appetite. Though light, the bread was bulky, and Akiko had difficulty balancing the two shopping bags. The bag containing the frozen food weighed heavily in her right hand, while with her left arm she hugged the other bag into which she had slipped the loaf of bread. 
heavily laden with these groceries, she could barely walk. As she struggled through the snow without an umbrella, Akiko wondered if she would run into her son, Satosh, who ought to be coming home from his private tutoring around this time. The shopping bag in her right hand, which contained two frozen crabs, felt particularly heavy. But Akiko was happy as she trudged along, her eyes fixed on the falling snow. Her husband, who had been brought up in the north, was extremely fond of these crabs, and it pleased her to picture him in a good mood that night. Satosh, on the other hand, found crabs such a nuisance to eat that he refused to have any. Akiko herself had not cared for crab ever since she had been terribly sick after eating some about ten years ago. She turned into Umezato from Itsukaichi Avenue and stopped in her tracks. A tall old man was walking towards her up the street. He looked very pale. Although he was wearing a tie and leather shoes, he had neither an overcoat nor an umbrella. He did not seem appropriately dressed for taking a walk on a snowy day. "'Father! Father!' Akiko called out loudly to her father-in-law, who was approaching her at a rapid pace. Just as he was about to pass her, she cried out, "'Grandpa!' in a different tone of voice, almost knocking him down as he brushed against the bag clasped to her chest. Only then did he notice her. "'Please check it out. I bought this print-on-demand thing for less than 20 bucks on Amazon. I don't know if you can get it from another better place. I think there's plenty of used copies with the attractive soft cover copy, this one, that you can buy various places online, but beg, borrow, or steal. It's a wonderful novel. Thanks for watching. Oh.